trying to get your reaction yeah. to the horrific fatal double shooting that took place in Virginia. Well, I saw it the first thing in the morning, and it just it brings back the memories of what it's like to get a phone call like that and to be told that your child's dead. I mean, it just for me, it's it just sort of triggers all of those thoughts because I know what that family's going through because my family's been there. Have you spoken to the families? No, I don't think that would, you know, I've, I've reached out to them and told them that um, anything I can do, you know, but, you know, they don't know me, so, I mean, it's a little presumptuous, but I did leave a message for uh, one family, you know, saying that who I was and that I had lost my son to gun violence and that they, if they wanted to contact me that they could because I don't think everyone knows how it's bad to lose a child but until it happens to you it takes you down to a place you've never been and really I'm 62 years old and Chris was our only child and you know it's just devastating how are you doing well you know it's, it's kind of you know um, I'm working hard you know I'm taking every opportunity that I have to do something. But I haven't been back in court since. I've been an attorney for most of my professional life, but I have not been back in court um, since Chris was killed. I uh, don't want any other parent to, or family to go through what my family's going through. And the fact is, we can do a lot more in this country to make it safer. It doesn't have to be like this. Most modern countries in the world do not have a level of gun violence anywhere we're approximating ours. And uh, every two years, if you go to Washington, D.C. and you go to the Vietnam War Memorial, there are about 59,000 names on that memorial. Ten-year war and all of the service people who died in that war, their names are on that wall. Every two years in this country, we lose more civilians on the streets of this country due to gun violence. Every two years, more than we lost in the Vietnam War in 10. How can that possibly be acceptable? It wasn't like this when I was growing up, and it wasn't like, it's not like this in other developed countries. We can do better than this. You said you reached out to one of the families. I understand that Allison Parker's father has stated that he would like to become the John Walsh of gun control. Have you heard this? <laughs> I have. That's. <laughs> I'm. I totally support it. As that sounds good to me. I, you know, that sounds like. I can really understand where he's coming from because I feel that when these things happen, there's no right way or wrong way to react to these kinds of tragedies from from a family perspective. I mean, every family's different, and I know there's a lot of differences within my own family, but I can really relate to Mr. Parker because. Uh, when I heard him last night on television, it just sounded, the feelings he was expressing were so much like my own. Yeah. Well, for many of us, we feel like you are the John Walsh, so doubling up efforts, do you feel like that will I, you know what? quicken? It's like with the civil rights movement. It's not just one moment or, or one person. You know, these things build over time and, uh, I remember one time I was talking to my brother and I was kind of discouraged about the way things were going f for my efforts and my work on this issue. And he said, <laughs> don't feel that way. He said, um, you know, just do whatever you can do. And even if everything that you do fails, it may make it easier for people who come after you to get it done. You're helping people. Uh, yeah, right. You are. Right. I, you know, I just, I've taken every opportunity that was afforded me to speak out on this issue. I've talked to groups of five, and as you know, I've talked to groups of 20,000 or more. And, you know, I don't make a distinction between you or Entertainment Tonight. If a media outlet uh, reaches out to me and wants to talk to me, I don't care if it's a small outlet or a big outlet. I've kept the New York Times waiting for somebody I can't remember now. 
you know, I mean, it's, you don't know in talking to people who you might connect with that may make a difference that you can't expect. And, you know, it, it, I've had people talk to me and say, uh, you know, they appreciated what I was doing, but that they weren't personally affected by gun violence. And I, I taught, was talking to this young person, an intern, with every downtown for gun safety who I work with. And I said, it's clear to me that you have been personally affected by gun violence. I can tell by, by the emotion that shows in your face that you've been affected by gun violence. How can anyone learn that 26 and 7 year olds are shot dead in their elementary school and not be personally affected by gun violence? You know? And I said after Chris was killed that you know, it was the fault of craven, irresponsible politicians in the NRA. And I still think that that's true. But it's also true that I didn't do anything after Sandy Hook to support those parents that were trying to get things done. The fact is that the majority of people in this country have let them get away with it. So it's not, the majority of people in this country want common, common sense gun laws, you know. But haven't done anything to get it done. And unfortunately, every day in this country, 88 people are shot and killed. How can that possibly be acceptable? We need to do better. And I hear from politicians, it's complicated. It's a complicated issue. That's just another way of, for a politician to say, I'm not going to do anything. I mean, that's basically what that, you know, on, on issues like this, you break it down into its component parts. There's not one single solution to gun violence in America. But I refuse to believe that there aren't solutions. I mean, people used to come to Steve Jobs all the time and say, we can't do this, can't do that. You know, this is the United States of America in the 21st century. The idea that the gun, lo gun lobby is putting forward that more guns is the solution to gun violence cannot possibly be right. <laughs> More guns is a solution to gun violence. It's like trying to put out a gasoline fire by putting gasoline on it. Uh, More guns is a solution to gun violence. It's kind of like saying we need to go back to the 1800s. More guns to solve gun violence is a solution from the 1800s, not the 21st century. And in fact, in the 1800s in America, they actually had more common sense in towns like Abilene, Wichita, Dodge City, because of the experiences they had earlier, they all had a form of gun, uh, common sense gun laws. All of those towns did. It wasn't the, as each of those cities adopted gun laws. Where you had to, if you came into town, you had to re turn your gun in to the sheriff and they gave you a, a token or something. So, you know, is it really their idea that we should all be walking around? Will they not be satisfied till we're all walking around carrying guns? What kind of America is that? It's an 18th century America, not a 21st century America. Now, gun violence has component parts. There's domestic violence. There's mental illness. There's anger management. There's uh, media has a role in this in the type of coverage that they give when they give uh, status and attention to the shooters in these cases and people see this media coverage and they think I, I have a grievance I you know I this the shooter of Allison and Adam in his manifesto he talks about Columbine and Virginia Tech you know they pay attention and so you know we all we the media needs to cover these stories. It's important. But we need to do it. I, and I don't have it figured out, but... Responsibly. But, yeah, we need to do... I, I, I'm not sure we should be showing the shooter's picture or the, using their name or putting their message out there. Because when you put the shooter's message out there and you give them that kind of notoriety, you give them what they wanted. This guy knew very likely, like the shooter in Isla Vista, he knew he was going to die that night, you know, and he had these grievances that he believed. Uh, but when the media puts out his message, they've just completed his plan. And so the media needs to get together and f figure this thing out. I'm not a media person, but that's a component.
first piece Domestic. of legislation ever you said to pass in the U.S. An initiative. An initiative. And, yeah. It was in Washington About, State yeah. in last November. Right. The first. Right. The first initiative that dealt with gun safety. So now we're in the process of qualifying initiatives in other states. And that would basically... What it does is it... Um, Various states have, some states have no background checks whatsoever on gun sales. Some states have background checks on some gun sales and not others. And so what happened in Washington state was it was to basically require universal background checks. They had a background check system, but this was to, to complete it and make it universal. And so in Washington state, it was the first time, I believe there might have been one other, but I believe it was the first one. Uh, the first gun safety measure that went directly to voters, the voters of a state, and that was in Washington. It was I-594, Initiative 594 in Washington State. And, um, you know, the gun lobby was there, and the national um, gun safety groups were in Washington State, and it was a battle. And uh, when it all settled down, it passed almost 60% to 40%. I mean, when people are, I, I grew up in the country. I understand guns. I've been around guns all my life. I'm a veteran. I was a military policeman in the Army. I carried a gun every day I was on duty, you know. And um, so I understand guns. A gun's a tool. I am not out to take guns away from people who are responsible gun owners. But we need to do a better job in this country about keeping guns out of the hands of dangerous people, mentally unstable people, people with criminal records, domestic abusers. Those folks should not have guns. Universal background checks on gun sale, all gun sales is not a terrible imposition on any reasonable gun owner. It takes, in most cases, it takes three minutes. Anything else you want to say? Can't think of anything, I'm sure. You asked. <laughs> Anything else for folks at home? Who are, who are on the oh, phone you asked me what to do. You. you asked me what to do. Well, it, it, if you want to do something, what you can do is uh, the organization I work with is called Every Town for Gun Safety, and we have a website, Every Town for Gun Safety. dot Every well, it's just Every Town. dot org. Every Town. dot org, and you can see we have reports on gun violence. Uh, research reports on gun violence, and we have what's in the news as far as the things that we're doing. And um, so if, if I would want people to do one thing, it would be to go to everytown.org and look at our website. I mean, that's what the NRA does. The NRA has one of the most sophisticated, I know, I've been all over it. <laughs> so the NRA has one of the most sophisticated websites. They have all kinds of information on their website. Uh, yeah. So we're, you know, trying to emulate the, the NRA in some ways, yeah. And lastly, I want to point out the bands. Right. That you wear devoted to putting these on every morning. Do you take, do you take them off at night? Yeah, I do. And I, I take them. I don't, if I'm going to the gym or going for a walk on the beach, then I just wear my, my sons or, if I'm working out, actually, I don't wear my, I don't wear any of them. But, but if it's a walk on the beach, I've got my sons on. But, and I put them on in a certain order, sort of. And then on this side I have, these are not one more wristbands that are available through every town for gun safety. And the, uh, but these are designed by Donna Karen, the fashion designer. And um, so, and then this is the watch Chris was wearing when he died. It was given to me when I went to view his, when we went to view his body at the morgue after we saw him. Uh, the sheriff's deputies came out and they gave us his stuff and he was wearing it when he died. I had given it to him on Mother's Day. Um, it was an old watch I had and I put a battery in it so I wear it all the time. I wore the band out. I had to, I've been wearing, I put it on when they gave it to me and I've been, I wore, wear it all the time. So I had to put a new band on, but um, yeah, these are, you know, as I travel around the country, uh, people give me these f for their family members, 
and uh, I always put Chris's on last. And then I, all the names, all the writing is in the same direction, so you can read them, you know. And then this one actually, bar they, they're overlapping, and over time, some of them are broken. And sure, yeah. This one is for I-594. I've got to wash the thing, I think. But see, this is I-594. That's a picture of Washington State. The campaign staff gave me that one. But this one is, this is Christina Taylor Green. Her mother, Roxanne, gave me this one. She was shot and killed in Tucson. She was nine years old. This is Alex Teves. His mother, Karen, gave me this one. He was shot and killed in Aurora. He was in his mid-twenties, and he was shielding his girlfriend's body with his, and he was killed, and she survived. Um, this is Kari's, and uh, this one says, I wish she would have held me instead of the gun. His mother committed suicide with a gun. This is for Brooklyn. Brooklyn was 14 years old. Her father went to pick her up at a neighbor's house. When he got there, the kids had found a gun in the kitchen. It was loaded. It went off, shot her in the back. Jake, the f Brooklyn's dad, put her in the car and drove her to the hospital where her mother was an emergency room nurse. Jake said that he knew that when he got her there, she was dead. But the doctors, because they knew Darcel, her mother, she was a nurse. They didn't want her just quit. So they took her in the operating room and they were in there for a long time with her and they couldn't bring her back. And Darcel was outside and she was just wanting to go in and they wouldn't let her. And then she, after they said she was dead, she wanted to go in and the police said she couldn't. It was evidence, you know. And the doctors said, forget that. <laughs> she's going in so they let her go in and he, she and Jake went in and you know so there's stories behind each one of these and I you know it's just it's too much we need to do better I mean it's just you know well and I told you that you've given a lot of hope to a local mom Shawnee Marshall who you've met and yes. she had this box that she wanted you to have oh story. thank you yeah yeah I I, I I wore her band from the time that you gave it to me until the time it broke. They break over time because they're just, you know, they're plastic, they stretch out and they break. But I save the broken ones and I have the one uh, from, for her two kids that, um, that you gave me and that broke. Um, but, you know, I, I keep getting new ones, so. It'd be nice not to see any more added to your arm. I, you know, well, I, you know, I'm honored that people give them to me. And if they give them to me, I wear them. So I may run out of room at some point, but they kind of go over each other. See, there's, they're already like two or three deep in some cases. Yeah. You have so. to shave your arm. <laughs> oh, thank you for talking. Oh, that's so, yeah. so good to see you. Well, I'm off to another state tomorrow.